Wi-Fi router security, how to set up a Wi-Fi router safely. Scammers, hackers, and identity thieves are working tirelessly to locate and take advantage of vulnerabilities in wireless internet or Wi-Fi protocols in the home or at the workplace. Learn how to set up a secure Wi-Fi router so that cyber criminals and Wi-Fi squatters cannot access your private data and burden your broadband. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I'm very happy to have you today. I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous. And if you're doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea. <laughs> Good luck, though. Let's roll. Today, I want to talk to you about how to set up a Wi-Fi router safely. Now, first, let's talk about why you need to lock your Wi-Fi access. Right? This is very important, whether you have it in the home or the workplace or anywhere else. You know, leaving your Wi-Fi open can be um, an entry point for scammers, identity thieves, hackers, all sorts of cyber criminals, right? An unsecured Wi-Fi router running, running on the default manufacturer settings could be a liability when it comes to several things, right? It could be a business, you can be sued, you can lose uh, client data. If, it, if it's a home, you can have sensitive data being stolen, right? So. You want to properly secure your, your Wi-Fi because if you don't, things like a public IP address can be seen. You can, be, you can let anyone with a wireless enabled device gain access into your, um, into your house or your business, right? That's very important. And, and what I'm talking about here is that when people access your Wi-Fi, they can access your emails, right? Banking information your uh, your your smartphone agenda your smartphone um you know contacts and all of those things can can land into the wrong hands right and nobody wants that so this is why you need to lock your wi-fi access the second thing here is let's try to understand the basic router security now every router this is needless to say should have a strong password right because what you want is you want to keep out the bad guys right now some routers come with no default password but you you want to change this during the setup right and you want to create when it comes to routers password you want to uh, prioritize passwords that are unique there are complex right and it, it's very easy it, it probably takes a few minutes to do if you really pay attention to it now some routers come with the specific instructions as to how to set up the the uh, the router password now the basic idea is very simple so your wireless router generally has a numerical address right so if you if you've lost the instructions you can probably find yours by searching online for your routers model number you can also go to the manufacturer's website and look for the the model number there now, when you go to security settings, you want to create a name for the router and choose a password then and select a type of encryption, right? Like WAP2, for instance, right? Now, it's very important, never name your router something that can be easily associated with you, such as your last name, your, your pet's nickname, or your home address, that kind of stuff, right? You want to choose a password that is complex not only complex but you want to make sure you can remember it right it shouldn't be easy to guess but it should be remembered easily by you or someone someone else in the in the in the household right now the thing here is that oh always remember to save the updated information when prompted right after changing the 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 manufacturer's default settings to your own to your customized ones save the updated information right so once you have that once you've done everything your router is secured against you know uh, roaming hackers now what are the different types of encryption protocols now depending on your on your router you might have options for different kinds of encryption right so you have uh, w, w, uh, WPA2 WPA and W EP. Let me just repeat that. The most common router encryption types are WPA2, 
WPA and WEP. Now, commercial riders from brands like Asus, Lynxis, and uh, Netgear include WEP, right? This is the wired equivalent privacy. Now, this is really the, this is what I call the legacy system. It's the oldest and most popular form of router encryption available. Now, being old, it lacks some uh, security features. It is the least secure of all encryption protocols. All right, so basically this kind of router uses radio waves that are easy to crack. And uh, for every data packet that is uh, transmitted, it uses the same encryption key. Right, so this is something that it's a, a little vulnerable. Uh, you can still mitigate the risk here, though, because if you use automated software, you can you can basically uh, encrypt increase the encryption key for this particular for this particular router, the WAP. The next one is the Wi-Fi protected access. This is the WPA. Now, this. The, uh, the this has this protocol this encryption protocol is much stronger than the WEP right so what it does is that the WPA scrambles the encryption key thereby getting rid of all the problems caused by hackers cracking the radio waves all right now it is even though it is uh, stronger than the uh, WEP the WPA is still let is still another type of uh, encryption form that is not as secure as the other two I'm going to talk about. Let's move on to the the third one, the WPA2. This is the Wi-Fi Protected Access 2. Now, this is currently, as of the date of this show, the most secure and most recent form of uh, encryption available, right? So this is why earlier I was just, I was just telling you. You always want to select WPA2 if it is available because it not only scrambles the encryption key, but it, it also does not allow the use of temporal key integrity protocol or TKIP, which is known to be less secure than AES. Right now, let's move on to the, to the fourth one. Now, advanced encryption standards. Now, when possible, you want to use AES on top of WPA2 or WPA. This is the same type of encryption used by the federal government to secure classified information. So if you have AES, you want to go for that. Now, routers that are manufactured after 2006, 2007 should all have the option to enable this on top of WPA2. All right, I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are still continuing our conversation today about how to set up a Wi-Fi router safely. And let's get into the nitty gritty here. Let's learn how to securely set up a Wi-Fi router. Now, you have to understand that the first thing you want to do is that you want to update your router with the new firmware and keep it up to date, right? So it is an important because you want to protect your router against the latest threats, right? So most modern routers will allow you to enable notification to prompt you when the, when the manufacturer makes patches and updates to the router's firmware available. This is very important. Don't ignore it, right? Now, if you don't get the notification, give yourself a reminder and go on the manufacturer's website where you can just uh, check if there are new patches or there are new upgrades available regardless of you getting the, you getting the notification all right the the what you want to do is you want to change your login credentials and router passwords right that's the next so after you update your router with new firmware to keep it up to date you want to change the the your login credentials and router password now traditional routers they will come with a default password that was created by the manufacturer right now this this might look a lot of folks make the mistake of believing that the manufacturer password because it's complex and res it looks complex and resistant to hacking it's not it's it's foolproof it's not there is a good chance that that most models of the same router share the same password all right so this password are very easy to trace or find on the internet especially in the dark web so this is why you want to change the password of your router during setup 
Now when it comes to the password, as I said earlier, you can choose something complex but easy to remember, right? So it can be a complex alphanumerical password with multiple characters, right? And if possible, change the username of your password too. Now, next thing you want to do is you want to always use, as I said earlier, you, you want to use the WPA2 to secure your wireless network, right? This is the Wi-Fi protected access too. Now, so the the uh, this is the most commonly used network security technology used in all wireless routers. All right. Again, it's the it, it, you know this means that if someone is within range and can see traffic, all they can see is the encrypted version. They cannot see the real the real version because the WP2 scrambles the traffic going in and out of the router. The next thing you want to do is you want to disable WPS. Now, Wi-Fi protective setup, uh, as I said earlier, it's th this is something that was created with the intention of making the user experience easier and quicker, especially when connecting new devices to the network. Right. The thing here is that the user has the option to use a pin to set up the device to create a connection right so this eliminates basically the use of the 16 character WP password that most router use now the thing here is that you know the WPS has earned the last 10 years a bad reputation for being unsecure because of the pin all right so the the, the pin is generally an eight digit number that you know uh, hackers and other cyber criminals can um, easily track you know, and, and the thing is that, and they use specialized software for that, right? This is the kind of, uh, in the industry, it's called brute force attack, all right? So when they basically carry out uh, an attack with the help of software by repeatedly using various combos of the usernames and passwords, all right? So most routers allow users to, to, to disable WPS. So this is what you want to do. The next step is you want to schedule your wireless networks online schedule, right? So the this is very important. We live in the era of uh, IoT, Internet of, Internet of Things, right? So the you want to make sure that your wireless is compatible with your IoT devices. Now, if you don't use IoT devices like smart coffee makers or smart refrigerators, then scheduling your wireless networks online schedule will work for you. Because because what it does is that it basically helps to disable the internet when it's not in use, right? So you're saving money, you're saving, you, you are actually buttressing your your online uh, citizenship, you, your online life, right? Because a disabled network won't show up in a hackers list, right? And this is very important. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to get rid of any risky or unverified services, right? So you want to. Uh, disable remote access to your router when you are actively connected to it right so you can for instance take uh, up NP for example which stands for universal plug and play and this is an easy way to allow devices to find other devices on your network right so it can also alter the router to allow devices from other networks to access to your, your device right but the, the thing is that unfortunately in the past five to ten years this has helped hackers to introduce malware and viruses by making them bypass the firewall. So you don't want you don't want that. Now the last step in uh, setting up your Wi-Fi router is to set up a guest network for smart home devices, right? Because a guest network has a lot of benefits, right? It it, it will give your guest a unique SSID and password, but it also prevents outsiders from accessing your primary network where your connected devices work, right? So once you set up a guest network, you will now have to share your primary network password with your guest, right? Because, and, and the good thing is they cannot access your internet, internet of things, enable devices, or infect your network and devices with malware or viruses that, that may be on their devices, all right? So you're trying to actually buttress your, your digital life in the proper way. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We're still going, we're still having a conversation around Wi-Fi router security, and um, and I just want to talk to you also about why it's important to be familiar with alternative router security tools. You know, we've talked about all the the tools that are there, the safety tools, but there are also some alternative router security tools. For instance, VPN, right? A virtual private network. What is it? Basically, a VPN encrypts connections between devices, creating online privacy and anonymity. So basically, this sort of uh, tool can mask your, um, can hide your internet protocol address, your IP address, so your online actions are virtu virtually untraceable. Now, VPN services also establish secure and encrypted connections to make sure that you have greater privacy that your data has greater privacy when you send it and receive it, even on secured Wi-Fi hotspot. All right, so you can use the VPN. That's a great way to uh, to buttress your Wi-Fi security. You can also use a firewall. Now, a firewall monitors outgoing and incoming network traffic and allows or blocks specific traffic, right? But you, you're gonna have to set it up in the settings. You're gonna have to configure those the things you want to block and the things you want to allow in the settings so a firewall is this a critical security feature to look for when selecting a router right so it's it, it's just very important now never disable a firewall because what you want you want to safeguard the 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 online life the online integrity of your network and devices right so you can you can install and use a strong a robust antivirus and security software for instance right because setting up security for your wireless network it's not that it doesn't take that much time but the risk the the investment is worth it right because the last thing you have to the the last thing you you you, you don't want to happen to you is that to allow some kind of vulnerability in your home network or your business network, right? Hackers and uh, identity thieves and all sorts of uh, cyber criminals, they're working around the clock to gain access to your personal and financial information, right? So just think about it. A small investment in security software could go a long way. Now, even if you, you don't have neighbors you want to prevent from borrowing your Wi-Fi, you'll be protecting yourself from more dangerous snoops, right? I mean, especially, let's say that, you know, nowadays we have the IoT, we, we live in an IoT era. A lot of homes are connected and various devices use Wi-Fi. So you'll be very smart to protect all, all, all the information that you have in the house, but also the, the information contained upon all the different devices, all right? So this is basically this is just kind of wrap up today's conversation. I hope that you really enjoyed the uh, the, the show. Just kind of ra uh, recap today's conversation. When it comes to uh, Wi-Fi router security, I talked to you about why you need to lock your Wi-Fi access to understand the basic router security, know the different types of encryption protocols, learn how to securely set up a Wi-Fi router and be familiar with alternative router security tools. Thanks for listening, and I will see you next time. Until then, stay marvelous.